Have a beat! Oh dang. I just realized the Wii U that I just demolished had my only copy of Xenoblade Chronicles X with the disc inside of it. Well, thankfully, the remaster for Nintendo Switch was announced today. <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can- I- I'm- I'm st <laughs> I'm still trying to kind of accept that this is real. I still can't believe that this is real. It, it just kind of came out of nowhere, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy. I'm, I'm so happy, guys. Anyways, hey guys, Nishquick here. We got, we got Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition. I have so much to say. I've like, I've written notes on this. Like, I have so much that I want to say about this announcement, about this game what I want it to be, what I'm hoping for, what I'm like nervous for, just my general thoughts, maybe some predictions about the story because we're getting new story. We're getting new story elements. <laughs> like this is this is actually when it when it comes to like a definitive edition of this game. This is close to being like everything that I've ever wanted from this. So, so this is just great, and like m many of you guys know, I've been playing this game throughout the past two years on stream, and I beat the game this year back in like June, I think, early June I beat the game, but I don't care, I'm gonna play this again, because it's coming to the Switch! It's coming to the Switch and it's finally gonna be free from the shackles of the Wii U, and that's what I want to talk about first. Anyways, I want to talk about that stuff first. I want to talk about it being stuck on the Wii U and now it finally breaking free from the Wii U. So, I I don't know if you guys remember this, but last year in like, I think it's August, I made a video and it was titled something like, This Nintendo Switch um, remaster is more important than Zelda or something. And what I was saying, my whole like idea, my whole like point of making that video was to say that Xenoblade Chronicles X should be a priority remaster, remake, definitive edition that Nintendo should prioritize over Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. And here we are, it is announced before Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. I feel a little bit vindicated there. I feel, I just, I'm just like, I knew it, I knew it, I keep, I kept saying, I kept saying, ever since like 2021, everyone was like, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, give it, give it, give it to us, and I'm like, not before Xenoblade X, not, not before Xenoblade X. Because when you have games that have been playable on three different console generations, and you have a game that has suffered on one console generation, you just, you gotta think of the priorities, you gotta think about which game out of the, those pool of games deserves to be in the spotlight, you know? And Xenoblade X obviously did not even break a million. It is a very important game. It is a very important game to Nintendo. And to all the Zelda fans who like watch my channel, like I'm, I'm a Zelda fan too, but I realized this after playing Xenoblade X, like people who have not tried this game, but love Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, play this game because it was the backbone and the foundation for Monolith Soft to build the systems and the world design and the traversal that you saw in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. If it wasn't for Xenoblade X, those games would not have the beautiful, impactful, like amazing open worlds that they do. And it's all because of Xenoblade X. It's all because of the lessons and the things that Marvelous Soft learned from this game, what they did and just how they like expanded on it. Like I, I'm so, so, so happy that this game is not stuck on a dead system, which literally no one bought. And you guys saw from my <laughs> intro, like I have, uh, give me one sec. This hunk of junk, this stuff right here, I have no need for this anymore. Like, I, I don't like, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't shatter this by the way, like, of course I didn't, but like, I, I have no need for this anymore because the only reason I was holding on to this 
was because of Xenoblade Chronicles X. And now, since it's on a thriving system, since it's on a system I'll be playing for... E even when the Switch 2 comes out, I'm not abandoning my Switch 1. Like, I know, of course, I'll play this game on Switch 2 as well, because probably going to be backwards compatible. But, like, this game has a chance now to sell well, to get in front of the eyes of people who would never have played it, to just, like, have a second shot. And that's what I wanted all this time after I, like, discovered this game, after I played this game. I was lucky enough to find a used copy, like, before the eShop, um closed down so i got it at a good price but i'm i'm getting it again 60 dollars. i'm getting it again and we haven't even gone into the trailer or anything but like i just wanted to let you guys know like if, if you have any slight interest in this game or in the series or like i said if you're fans of like zelda breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom give this game a shot please like support it like i i don't normally like say like oh go out support this game get it like i sort of did with metroid dread because i wanted it to do well but like this game man like it it deserves a second shot and like xenoblade doesn't like sell amazingly but for a jrpg genre on like exclusive to one <laughs> system like this it's doing pretty well and like now we finally have the opportunity for xenoblade x to get its stars to get its recognition and yeah anyways i'm i'm rambling guys like i'm i'm just i'm just hyped bro hold on i'm i'm still getting so many messages from people about this <laughs> okay so let's watch this trailer i'm not gonna go frame by frame like most people will do or anything like it's not gonna be like a luxon breakdown or anything but i i just want to see what is going on because i only got to see this trailer like once really quickly i was at work and i had to run to the bathroom <laughs> i had to watch this trailer and like hold my mouth closed so i didn't scream <laughs> anyways let's let's watch this let me bring down the volume just a bit and yeah so first off one thing i want to say is yeah monosoft is working on this but like this isn't like a lot of people are saying this is how they expected this definitive edition trailer to be like if this would be announced i didn't like there's that one trailer where cross is walking in the hangar and then he gets into the scale and then it like shoots up and then it plays the key we've lost i thought it was gonna like be sort of like that but have builders of a legacy's song so at least it has a song at least it has a song so this well, is where I freaked out. I was like, okay, Xenoblade X, HD, whatever. Uh, and then the camera pans up and you see Alma's new face. And I saw that and I was like, whoa, For a giant beached spaceship, that, is, that is a substantial, like one thing that one of my friends was saying is a lot of these NPCs, For a giant beached spaceship, anyway. these NPCs sort of have like the same character models that they did on Wii U. That's fine. You're not going to be staring at the face of all these NPCs, what? all these cars or anything. Like or not, the cat looks different though, I did see. And overall, it's just got a little bit of brighter colors, which is interesting because X is known to be a little bit muted, a little bit darker, grittier. So, I mean, it's not going to be like a Persona 3 Reload situation where like the colors are like completely different. It's still got the vibe from what I've been seeing over here and in places like like... I don't know, Noctilum, Sovalum, it's gonna look really nice, Name but like this guy, I think Earth. he has the same like model on Wii U or something, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. This is when I was like, holy shit, that's like, that's a whole I'm new coming. Elma, that's not even, that's not uh, Wii U Elma, that's not Xenoblade 2 Elma, this is a whole new Elma, new eyes, new face. I, I noticed like when I saw Elma Lao Lin, they look a little bit shinier, but I love, I love this look. Like the more, like at first I saw it, I was like, ah, I don't know how I feel about it. The more I see it, the more I love it. Like, I, I think this might be my favorite like character model art style out of the four games that we have on Switch right now. Maybe this and Xenoblade 3, because like this, like r more realistic not definitely not realistic but like more realistic than xenoblade one two and three but with those eyes those eyes look so good those eyes look a little more stylized and i, I just love new it new los angeles new los angeles cross Welcome looks basically the same NLA. 
He's, he's got similar eyes to Elmo, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, 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 and yes, so Primordia. First, another survivor came to join our band of refugees. Yeah, this, this looks good. This is like the opening cutscene where you see all this. Oh, okay. So this is this is primordial on the wii u what am i doing why am i not watching this in hd i mean it's not gonna make much of a difference this is like a switch game but like yeah it does look a little more vibrant and it's oh my god noctilum looks so good oh my god i have to like go back and watch this on like i don't know what kind of like settings or monitor i would need to watch this on oh god yes i'm so excited to fly in a scale yeah even some of these like enemies like look at that enemy in soul i forgot the like family it's from the enemy family like look at that it, it looks different it looks it's got like a little more of a sheen to it texture is a little nicer and then like the colors are just popping this would this game like i am i was telling some of my friends this but like I am so excited to play this in handheld mode. And I will talk about that a little later, but like, I have a lot of questions about the features and how this game is going to play. But my like biggest thing with this game coming to Switch is like, how am I gonna play it in handheld mode? <laughs> Cause like, I, I play so much in handheld mode now, like even Metaphor Re Fantasio, I've been playing that mostly on Steam Deck, I'm just sitting in my bed because I don't feel like sitting on my like, desk or i'm just doing something and like passing out just playing on my steam deck this game is a perfect for handheld mode like i can see myself playing it for ages on handheld yeah look at look at this is noctilum right yeah look at noctilum's grass like oh so good so good and then this this is the opening cutscene with the ganglion and the well, ghosts and all that and lynn looks very different now that i'm actually seeing this on my monitor lynn looks pretty different and she looks pretty good but like she's even got like a design change i noticed that like she's only got like one monado pin versus two ourselves. like is she you know one there and she's had another one on the other side but now she only has one and i was like oh what does that mean I means anything. yeah looks good looks good looks good our native home is gone Wow! Oh gosh, we, 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 I, I want to see him again. Lau looks very like I think Elmo looks the most different. Elmo and Lin look the most different. Lau and Cross look basically the same. So I'm I'm curious how everyone else is gonna look. I'm so excited to see L, Celica, Hope. Like, some of these characters look really goofy in the Wii U version. Like, Hope had this, like, smile that made her look very creepy when she was not, like, she was a complete opposite of that as a character. And then L, of course, he's got his whole alien vibe to him, so I want to see how he looks. Celica also, Celica Rock, like, all these, like, I guess, um, alien kind of characters. Even, like, the Ganglion. I'm so excited to see how they look in this new art style. In a shroud of light. Yeah, so these NPCs look similar to how they did on the Wii U version. So I think with the main characters, no it's going to have more of a kind of um, difference no idea what fate upgrade in, in their visuals. Us. Oh, Elma looks amazing. That That's one hell of a glow Only up. That we had to keep living in order to see it. All right. Is that it? That's... Oh no, that's not it actually. <laughs> yeah, this is this is what I want to talk about. Definitive edition. I knew it was gonna be called definitive edition. Um, I don't know why it's red. That looks weird. Why didn't they make it blue? I actually like. I, I'm. The, the, this logo is kind of awkward because of its red. Like the red should have been saved for Xenoblade One. Like I don't know why they made it red. Just, whatever. Okay, here we go. I am actually surprised frankly a little shocked that they showed this part in the trailer and it's not like a major spoiler out of context is not going to mean much but at the same time if you like think about it too much it's gonna you're gonna make some assumptions also i already have like friends who are theorizing about this and like 
I, I don't know if they should have shown this in the reveal trailer, but it's good to have confirmation that this is going to be a big feature of this game. So let's let's see what they say. And I, I turned the volume up just so I can hear one of those lines. Fancy seeing you here. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, um, we'll get back to that later, but basically, that seems to be hinting at the epilogue that we're going to be having with this game. And yeah, we're getting it on March 20th, 2025 for the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so um, I'm trying to find like a press release for this, but I all I can find is this store on the eShop. So let's at least talk about what's over here. So, year is 2054, Earth has been destroyed, la da 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 yeah, 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 the aid of Skells, yeah, oh my god, I can't wait for you guys to finally jump into Skells, the pe you guys who haven't played this game, oh my god. Visually enhanced edition of this open world RPG contains newly added story elements and more. And more is probably just quality of life features, so that's what I wanted to talk about next. I expect to see a lot of quality of life features in this game. It's not like the original game was like unplayable or anything, but like if you guys tuned into some of my live streams, there was a lot of like grievances I had in terms of like the user interface. And like everyone is saying like, oh, the text, you gotta make the text bigger. The text being bigger is just one small little thing about this. That is definitely important. Like your copy needs to be legible. You need to be able to read what's on your screen in terms of like the font sizes, the kerning, the styling, all that, whatever. I, like, me being like a designer myself, I was in those menus in Xenoblade X for much longer than I intended to be. And I wanted to make a video about this. I don't know if I'll have time to. I might try to do it before the game comes out. I'm not sure if I will, but basically, I feel like in Xenoblade Chronicles X, when I played this game, I spent about 110 hours, 120, give or take. I, I can guarantee you at least 8 to 10 hours, at least 8 to 10 hours, maybe if not more, were spent in these menus. And of course, I had to do a lot of specking for all my characters, all my skills, everything. I just I need to make sure they're in tip top shape. But at the same time, the navigation the structuring of this menu, the architecture, was off. It was not good. I was... I didn't really find features, important features, like putting augments onto your gear. I didn't find those until well into like 20 hours into the game. And then even when I did find those, the management was so slow, the sorting of the all the menu items you get, all the weapons you get, all the gear slots you get, the sorting of that was so slow, so tedious, and it just wasn't snappy, it wasn't good. That is the biggest thing I want them to change. Yes, make the text bigger, make sure it's legible, make sure I can read it on like the big screen TV I have outside and not have to play this game exclusively on this monitor over here in my room. But also just make the navigation of those menus a lot better. Not only the gear, not only the um, affinity chart, the collectopedia as well. All these menus are just tedious, tedious. It's it's not fun, not fun at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, that is one thing. Another thing I want them to do in terms of like this more stuff, quality of life stuff. I want better quest tracking. Give me quest tracking that was from Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. If you wanted to still have that follow ball kind of stuff going on, then make it similar to Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which you had like the Iris network kind of guiding you where to go. Yes, do that for every single quest in the game, because there were quests in the game where you had to do like, um, kind of, um, fetch quests, getting a lot of these like items or whatever you needed to find in the overworld, just those orbs, and do it like you did in Xenoblade Chronicles 1, where you have all the items on your map and you can just go to them. You can know exactly where to go instead of just running around, driving your skill, just like getting lucky. 
and I don't want to have to resort to like a third party like website which chronicles all the items and where to find them and all that. I don't want to like look into that. I just want to have the game tell me where to go, where to find it, and it'll save me so much time, energy, all that stuff. Just make the side quests as seamless and as simple as they were in Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition and Xenoblade 3. And then, the biggest thing that I can think about right now, I mean, I said the biggest thing was the user experience, user interface, all that stuff, but arguably even bigger is this game is on the Switch now, it's not on the Wii U anymore, so we're not gonna have this. We're not gonna have the gamepad. So, it's not like we're gonna be eliminating Frontier now from this game. So, I hope that the next time we see this game, we get a good idea, a good glimpse into how Frontier Nav is gonna work. And I was expecting to actually see that in this trailer. Like, a lot of people are saying this trailer was kind of bare bones. I kind of agree with that, sort of. Cause like, oh my god, I gotta save these pictures, like wow. But like, yeah, this trailer just showed us the characters, the world, like how this game looks. We're getting the new story, which I'll talk about later, but like... Yeah, we. Th this is all good stuff, but I would have hoped to at least get a glimpse of how Frontier Nav is gonna work on your Switch, because that is the make or break for this game and they can easily do it they can definitely do it but like i i really hope that frontier nav is going to be a seamless experience because attaching probes on your wii u gamepad was it was easy you didn't have to do much you just tapped a few taps on your wii u gamepad and you got it done so I hope Frontier Nav going into a whole different menu, doing all that stuff, is not like a tedious thing that you're going to be doing. And yeah, I, I guess we'll see how it goes, especially when playing in handheld mode. I hope it's easy, seamless, and not it doesn't detract from the experience. Okay, I think it's high time we finally talked about this new, uh, where is it? <laughs> this new story scenario. I am going to be a little vague here initially, and then later I'm going to have to get into some spoilers regarding Xenoblade Chronicles X, obviously, and then even um, some other Xenoblade games, which I don't want to say right now, because then it might give away what I'm going to say about this. So anyways, um, this new scenario, I don't want to hang on the screen for too long because it's... It's, uh, it's a little risky that they kind of showed that. But anyways, I am very looking forward. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they do because many people have obviously been saying one of the biggest like detracting points of Xenoblade X was the fact that the story almost felt incomplete. Like you have so many cliffhangers at the end, like what the heck is going on? Like it just ended so abruptly. And what you're seeing at the end of this trailer, like this, thing over here, like what we saw, this stuff, this is just one of two cliffhangers. And like, people who have played the game definitely know what I'm talking about. There's another cliffhanger you see before this, which is like, crazy. And yeah, so a lot of us are thinking like, if there's additional story content, what form is it going to take? And that's a interesting discussion point. Is it going to be like Future Connected, which is like a separate epilogue you can um, kind of access right from the start of the game in a different menu? Is it like that? And it's like a 12 hour campaign. Is it kind of like Torn of the Golden Country or Future Redeemed, which are even longer, which could be like maybe upwards of 20 hours, which are like almost like their own standalone games? Or, um, this is what I personally think. Xenoblade Chronicles X, all it really needed is it didn't necessarily need an epilogue, it didn't need a story DLC, it didn't need anything like that. What I think that they can give us in this epilogue, what I think that they can give us in this definitive edition, is they can literally just give us two or three extra main story chapters in the game. Because, it'll feel like the final boss of this game won't necessarily be the final boss because I'm still being a little vague here, but 
uh, one of the biggest mysteries of Xenoblade Chronicles X is, as Elma says, there's something about this planet. What is it about this planet? So eventually, after one of the main big threats in this story is dealt with, the next threat or the next mystery will be the mystery of Mira, which I think this is definitely hinting at right here. And now I will give you guys a spoiler warning. I'm going to discuss some spoilers for Xenoblade Chronicles X, and I will also be discussing spoilers for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Future Redeemed. So if you haven't played any of those, or if you've played a few of those, or not all of them, then that is your spoiler warning. Anyways, so, so Lau is back, and this person seems to be wearing like some kind of like leather jacket or something. But from what I remember after looking into like Xenoblade Chronicles X lore and stuff, is that this person is someone known as the Black Knight. And I don't know exactly like what the whole lore about him is, but from what I remember looking into some of my research and stuff, like none of this is like spot on. A lot of other channels have talked about this more in detail, much better detail, much better like like research and all that because they have like the art of Mira which I haven't been able to research and like uh, refer to because I don't even have it right now but this Black Knight seems to be someone who's pulling the strings and sort of I wouldn't say in control of what's happening in Mira but sort of a source for answers as to a lot of the mysteries in Mira. A lot of people initially thought that it could be Elma's original partner who uh like left earth in the white whale with them it could be that person but there's a lot of other theories as to who they could be and another thing that i remember from xenoblade x one thing that really stuck with me is the life hold reminded me a lot about origin and I was talking to uh, my buddy Dumb Zeno. You guys might have seen some of his videos. If you really enjoy Xenoblade lore or Xeno lore, definitely check him out. One of my favorite channels relating to um, Xenoblade and Xeno lore. Definitely check him out. I was talking to him about Xenoblade X, and we were saying that the life hold really reminds us of Origin. It is storing souls, it can recreate matter. But also, another thing that really, like, stuck out to me was Mira reminds us, like, we were talking about this, Mira reminds us of Ionios. Mira is, like, it almost feels like different worlds combined into this one, like, mass that is Mira. And, like, there's this picture of the continent of Mira, or, like, the planet in, um, I think it's in, um, Art of Mira where it just looks like such a messy planet with all these continents just like it looks like a jigsaw puzzle kind of and it almost like reminds me of ionios and that's how ionios was ionios was messy it was just bionis and all rest just like mushed together and like what am i trying to say with all of this what am i trying to say well uh, one thing is for certain is that a lot of Takahashi's concepts, like maybe he had a concept similar to Origin that he like kind of developed with Xenoblade X, didn't like make it into fruition, but it later came back in Xenoblade 3. What I'm saying is if they can connect these games, which I don't, I'm not getting my hopes up with like connecting these games, I, I feel like that could be a way that they are connected. I'm not saying that the life hold is origin because like it clearly probably isn't it is similar in technology and similar in some concepts and i'm not saying that mira is a product of origin similarly how ionios is a product of origin it could be like it, it's a similar concept it reminds me of these kinds of things that i'm seeing in xenoblade 3 but I am not so sure, but Takahashi can pull strings, he can make things work, 
and my thing with Xenoblade X being canon is many of us do believe that Xenosaga is more canon Z than Xenoblade X because of everything that happened in Future Redeemed. We saw the radio, we heard, Dimit we heard Dimitri Yuriev's name, all that. My thing is, when it comes to Xenoblade X, it, the intro of this game does not like fit in with the timeline that is established in the Klaus Saga. But the Zohar and the Conduit can phase shift. I like having played Xenogears, I think Xenogears refers to the Zohar as the phenomenon phase transition something like that. The, the Zohar and the Conduit can do crazy things. I would not put it out of the realm of possibility that when that thing is triggered, it sets off something in a parallel universe. Or even before Klaus triggered the Conduit or the Zohar, there was a parallel universe that existed because of the happenings of the Conduit and the Zohar or the Monolith or whatever you want to call it. And that's where Xenoblade X is happening. I believe that this is its own contained universe, but if they were to connect it, I feel like this is a perfect opportunity with this expanded storyline to do so. And um, there is one more thing I want to talk about with this Black Knight guy. So let's go here and I'm going to put the volume on my speakers a little louder because some of my friends like pointed something out to me and it's kind of insane and I need to hear it for myself one more time just to be sure about this. Fancy seeing you here. Fancy seeing you here. So let me know in the comments who you think that voice actor is. Who does he sound like? It definitely doesn't sound like anyone in Xenoblade X that I remember. And uh, here's the thing, guys. This m very well could be the voice of the Black Knight. I didn't expect him to sound like this. I expected him to sound like... I expect him to have this like dark, gray, like evil voice, something like that. I expect him to sound like what Groff would sound like in Xenogears, <laughs> but he sounds like this normal dude. But many people, and one of my friends in particular, who's like a massive, big fan of this game, he was saying that this guy, let's listen to it one more time. I'll, I'll just say it right now. This guy sounds like David Menkin. This, uh, the voice actor from Mallows. Let's hear it. Fancy seeing you here. I don't know, guys. Like, I can kind of hear it. But you could say he sounds like anyone. Like, I remember someone else saying it sounds like Ray Chase. But I told them in the comments section of someone else's video, I was like, Ray Chase, it could be his voice. Like, the only other, like reference I have for Ray Chase is um, Alfin from Tales of Arise, but another reference for Ray Chase is L in Xenoblade X, but like you could very well have them playing two characters. You can ha have them playing two characters, but like, I don't know, it, it would actually be really cool if they expand on L's race, make him like sort of a villainous figure, I don't know, I don't know, and still have Ray Chase voice him, I don't know, no, that's, that's kind of a reach, but Many people are saying this sounds like David Menken, particularly at the end of Xenoblade 2 where he's talking to Numa when she's putting the final inputs in Ion and the world tree is collapsing and all that. I mean, oh, spoilers for Xenoblade 2, by the way, sorry. <laughs> um, um, it, I can kind of hear it. At the same time, I don't want to get my hopes up, but this could be a surefire way to set up Xenoblade 4 if this is Malos. If this is if this is logos, if this is Malos, if this is someone relating to any of that, if he takes off his hood and we see Malos, I will I will just lose it. I will absolutely just lose it. I'll like I'm gonna live stream this game a lot, and I'll be definitely like live streaming the epilogue. If it's freaking Malos, I will lose my mind because the main reason I will lose my freaking mind <laughs> is because Takahashi hinted at us learning more about Malos in the future. And he specifically said this in Ionios Moments when he had that interview. He was talking about how Logos, and not even just Logos, but Malos himself is inside and sword. 
and he said that why Malos is there, I cannot tell you right now, but you will learn that a little bit later or something like that. I made a video about that earlier, you, you guys can look into that and see what the actual quote was or something, but... And then um, we talk about that in the Conduit cast as well with um, Kevin the protagonist and Dumzino as well, but like, if this guy r takes off his hood and it is Malos, <laughs> Malos slash Logos is the Dark Knight or the Black Knight, it has so many implications for what Xenoblade 4 could be setting up Xenoblade 4, which could have references to Xeno Saga, as well as Xenoblade Chronicles X, potentially. But even more beyond that, um, there's one more, th like, mystery about Xenoblade X lore that could be answered with this. Um, the main villain, if you want to call him the main villain, he's kind of a pathetic main villain, <laughs> Luxar. Luxar ke keeps talking about this entity called the Great One, and the Vita, the Vita is his skull, or the Vita, if I remember correctly, is the Great One's vehicle, or the Great One's skull, and the Vita gives off this, like, weird aura, and it's got, the, like, this purple aura to it, if I remember correctly. If I'm, if I'm off, if I forgot some of this stuff, please let me know in the comments below, please correct me. The Vita gives off this like purple aura, and every time he was talking about the Great One, every time they were talking about the Vita, I'm like, dude, it would be hilarious if Malos was the Great One. And I was just joking. I was like joking about it to one of my friends. I was like, oh, what if Malos is the Great One? Oh, Malos is coming back in Xenoblade 4. What if he's the Great One? We could very well, like, it is a possibility. David Menken's voice, maybe. If Malos is <laughs> the Black Knight, it could very well be setting up something massive for Xenoblade 4. And the thing is, I'm not going to get my hopes up. This could very well just be Elma's partner. And it could just be like a more like, like story similar to that. But like, even like Nintendo themselves, like, what does it say here? It says here, I think, right? Or does it say? It it says somewhere, like in some press release, somewhere, they like really hint at like who is the man in the hood? Who is this hooded man? I don't remember where they're saying that, and I can't like find like a solid press release for this. Yeah, I can't really find it right now, but basically, yeah, there was... I, I'll find it later, but there was a hint that like Nintendo of America or some tweet said like who is this hooded man and they're trying to like drum up hype for who this guy is. So if they're hinting at it being Malos, I will I will lose my mind. Absolutely I will freak out. <laughs> and I'm like again I'm not getting my hopes up, but like we shall see. We shall see. Anyways, um, I've been recording way too long. I knew this was going to be a long video because I usually like to ramble about these things. But anyways, I want to talk about one last thing. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention one last thing. Um, two things, actually. Um, one thing is the online servers, they're coming back. I mean, they're going to be on the Switch. Like, the Wii U servers aren't coming back. But, like, this game's online life is going to be revived and i'm very happy because i never had the pleasure i never had the chance to play this game online so i'm very happy to play this online with my friends and everyone else who wants to play online that's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be so great and one thing is i was still streaming Xenoblade chronicles x on and off like i did a birthday stream this september i was streaming like until i finished the game and i was going to do some more affinity quests i'm probably gonna quit that series now that this is announced so i don't really burn myself out on this because like doing so much xenoblade x and then i'm gonna play it again when this comes out in march i'll just kind of feel burnt out so i just want to take a break from this game because i've been playing it literally off and on for the past two years so i just want to wait till it comes on the switch play it on the switch and just kind of like enjoy it there and then and not get burnt out with so much xenoblade x and this is not the Nintendo Switch 2, but this is equally, if not better, because, like, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. Like, I made that video last year about 
how this remaster remake is more important than a Twilight Princess Wind Waker. And I knew it was coming deep down in my heart. I knew it was, but it, it just feels so good to have this now and have all the four Xenoblade Chronicles games on one system and I'll have all physical copies of them. It's going to be, oh my God, it's going to be so great. This is like, us Xenoblade Chronicles fans have been feasting ever since the, ever since Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came on the Nintendo Switch in 2017. Like, even though I wasn't a fan then, I, I became a fan when uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition released in 2020. But like, wow. I am... I'm so happy guys, <laughs> I'm so happy that all of you guys who haven't had the chance to play this game can finally play it, and if you have not played this game, get it, I am telling you, get it, and even if you have played this game, let's play it again, it's gonna be hype, it's gonna be fun, so anyways, let me know what you thought about all this stuff in the comments below, what are your guys' um, most anticipated features that you want to see in this? What do you guys want to see the most in terms of quality of life features, changes, anything like that? What do you guys think about my predictions about the story and the lore? What do you guys think about all that? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, let's get hyped for this. This is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today, like a Xenoblade Chronicles game on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.